Thank you. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for being here. We are going to spend 50 minutes together to speak about local currencies. And the good news is we are going to have a workshop about time banks just after it. So it's not only 50 minutes, but we'll begin with 50 minutes. I'm happy to have here on the panel three uh, different experts and actors of the currency field in France. I have Bruno Ménard that comes from Toulouse, that is on the Solviolette project. He will explain you what is the Solviolette. I have Anne-Cécile Rago that co-founded TAWA, an, an organization to learn about complementary currency. She spent one year in South America in order to develop, to learn and to uh, see the different design of complementary currency that exists there. She is now uh, um, working in consultancy with Alternative and Alliance, a French consulting cabinet. And we have Hervé Pillard, uh, independent lawyer, and they are going to tell you about currency. Let me just please introduce briefly this beautiful subject that is currency and money. We all use money every day. We all use money every morning, every afternoon, but we have no idea what it is. We uh, have completely lost the feeling and the meaning of what is money and what it should serve. We have a huge crisis of trust, we have a huge crisis of credit, of finance, of money in all its, its different aspects. So what we are going to try to show you today is what are the solutions to the problems that is uh, what we face today, that is most of the credit creation is in the hands of private banks. And that is a, a, a big problem. The second problem we have is a, a wealth concentration. The money is always going in, in the same hands for a few people. Even always more people, always less people are concentrating more money. And uh, this is why complementary currency do exist. Not alternative, but complementary. They bring something else. And we are going to see two different examples of what you could design, what you could use, what you could join as a complementary currency system. And please welcome Bruno that is going to show you, explain you the Solviolette. Thank you, Etienne. Hello, everybody. Um, we are about to celebrate the second birthday of, of the local currency Solviolette. And I would like to make a little assessment with us, with everybody, uh, to, to tell you where we are now after two years of, of progression. Uh, we have 1,247 uh, 1, users all around the, the city. For 126 shopkeepers or companies where people can, can use this money. Uh, this year in 2013, we renewed the, the partnership with the municipality, which is uh, mainly our, our principal uh, source of uh, funding. We have also private funding, and uh, here you cannot see it, but we have also membership fees, which represent about 10% of our funds. And uh, currently, the annual average rotation rate is about five, which means that uh, on one year, the, the notes of, of the currency um, is exchanged from one person to another five times a year. And you have to know that currently now euro is only at 2.41. So that means that the money, the cur local currency, flows much quicker than the euro. And that means also that it creates much more wealth. We have now 63,000 souls uh, in, uh, in circulation. If you multiply it by five, you reach uh, ethical wealth. I, I call it ethical wealth because the way we do business is very different. I will explain it uh, a little bit uh, after. So that means that the wealth created is 315,000 souls now, after only two years. Uh, we can say that in France, this is uh, quite a good result after only two years. And that's the only project that reached this result after two years. Okay, the everyday working of the Soviet, uh, as you know, I, I guess, it's what we call the melting money. Do you know what is it? What does it mean, melting money? Does everybody know? No? Okay. Melting money means that the money, the front value of the notes, is decreasing when you keep it too much time in your pocket. In the case of Serviolette, every time you, you keep your note in your pocket more than three months, 
the front value of the nodes uh, is losing five, uh, two percent. Sorry. So if you have a note of one soul and you keep it in your pocket more than three months, at the end, uh, the value is 98 cents. This is uh, like an incentive to, to make sure that people are going to use the money and make flowing the money within the network. This is the, the ID actually of the currency, local currency. If you convert also your sol violet into euro, we have a 5% uh, fee. Uh, because what this is what we call a leak, and this is not really what we want. Because uh, the conversion in sol into euro from sol into euro is uh, a thing that make uh, the the network more uh, weak, weaker. So this is a problem, and we have to fight against it. There is also a specific characteristic called the approval form for the companies and the shopkeeper who wants to to join the network. And the approval form is based on various criteria, such as environmental criteria, social criteria, economic criteria, uh, the link to the territory, and things like this. And this is really the identity card of the local currency, because uh, it's a way to say, we want to support people who do this kind of business, this kind of different business. And that's a uh, first way to give power to people. We now are working on different format to use the, the currency. We have the notes, we have also the mobile phone. Uh, we have the magnetic cards. This is an experimentation now. And we have also internet, but internet is mainly used for between company. So it's a B2B format. And we are working uh, currently on a very, very big task, which is the decentralization of the project. What does it mean? It means that we are creating uh, local uh, groups of citizens uh, classified by area of the city. And what they do is just meeting together once a month, something like that, and start to think about how they are going to develop the, the, the network uh, the way they want. So going to uh, shopkeepers in the neighborhood, organize debates, projection, try to sensibilize people around them uh, on the monetary issues, something like this. And that's why now the decentralization is very important because citizens are the main core of the project. This is not just the association, this is the citizens. Um, and to, to finish, I would like to explain to you the five, step, the five steps, um, according to me, that um, brings a local currency such as Servilet from local resilience towards global resilience. First, the fact to use a complementary currency is a way to say we are not stupid. We as citizens do understand how the monetary system works. We are not stupid. We, we have some tools to change it and we want to change it. This is the first step. The second step is to realize that you can invest your euros in uh, ethical and local projects and microcredits because actually you can do um, monetary creation, monetary issue as a citizen using a complementary, uh, a complementary currency. Do you know how does it work, this creation of money using this complementary currency? Actually, from one euro, you create two. Because from one euro, you put one euro on an ethical bank account and you put one sol within the network. So this is called the creation of money. From one, you make two. Third step, you realize that by doing this, that you are able to restrict the money creation capacity of the dominant bank networks because you put your money in the real economy and you try to, to help people uh, in their business, in their everyday business. Then you realize also the fourth step that this money flows exclusively in real economy. Do you know uh, today the percentage of money that flows in the real economy? Do you have an idea, something like that? Percent? Do you have an idea? Who wants to try? Five percent? Three? Not more. Two percent. Two. Yes, this is true. The question is to know 
uh, the percentage of money that flows within the real economy, I mean the goods and services economy, it's only 2%. The 98 persons are using for what we call uh, speculative economy, financial economy. Uh, I think there is a problem, no? <laughs> uh, a complementary currency allows people to use their money exclusively within the real economy. 100% of their money in the real economy. Uh, and this is a money that flows much quicker than the euro. So you have two effects, very important. Because as you know, wealth is created when, when money flows. Do, do you know that? It's because when people just exchange goods and services, this is the way we create wealth. But if you have a money that doesn't circulate, that doesn't flow within the economy, the wealth is just blocked. We have a problem. And a local currency allows to unblock this problem. And fifth step, which is, according to me, the more important, it's to reach in the future a coordination of all the local currencies in France. And uh, actually, we are working on this uh, because the Soul is a national movement. And uh, we have more or less 80 projects of, of local currencies in progress in France, which is quite a lot. And the idea is to allow a convertibility between all of them. And that could be, in the long term, an alternative for the government to have a solution, a concrete solution, to uh, get back its ability to create money. And I'm not talking about euro. I'm talking about a money, uh, money, uh, currency which is complementary to euro. Because, as you all know, uh, today the, the, the rarity of money is artificially built. So scarcity, sorry. The scarcity of money is artificially built. And doing this job at the national level could be a solution to fight against this. Doing this job at the national level could be a solution to eventually have money to finance ecological, economic, and social transition of our country. Look what happened yesterday. It was the, the, the how do you call it in, in uh, yeah, the f labor, yeah, okay. Everybody was, there was a thousand of demonstrations in the streets because people are just bored of this situation. But we have here, a mean to, to, to create new money and to finance a very useful project. And this is a way, according to me, to fight against austerity. Thank you. Thank you, Bruno. <laughs> I'm going to ask Anne Cécile to present the project that she creates with Info Jobs in Barcelona. Well, so I'm going to talk about another kind of social currency. Time banks, and it's a peer to peer platform to share skills and knowledge without euro but other currency, time. So the project is called Preparate Banco de Tiempo, and the idea is to share skills and knowledge to improve your employability. Why employability? Because we've done this project with InfoJobs, and InfoJobs is the major online job search in Spain. They have millions of users. And that's quite a big point because time banks, it's not new. Uh, time banks have existed since, since the 80s, more or less. But doing this with a big company, we aim at reaching more people, we hope, millions of people. And at the same time, this project fits perfectly in InfoJob strategy. So that's why we get them 100% involved and they are empowering the whole project. So, as you know, unemployment rate in Spain is pretty high. It reached a record 26%, and even last week, 27.2%. So we are here addressing one of the most pressing social challenges that Spain is facing. Looking for a job is a big and stressful challenge. I guess some of you have been un unemployed. But we all have a lot of skills and knowledge to share. And we all have ideas and projects. And we do need each other to reach our goals. 
and above all, to gain the confidence we need to empower each other so we can achieve our goals. So here is a platform, so it's an online platform. Um, and what the, the gold rule, the main rule is one hour equals one hour. Because one life equals one life. So I give you just a very basic example. So let's take David, he helped Patricia to review a resume. He receives one hour, and with this hour, he can ask any member of the time bank. He's not forced to exchange back with the same person for anything he needs to improve his employability. So what can you find in this time bank? You can find people that can help you get ready for a job interview, like people working in human resources, career coaching. You can learn new skills. You can get up to date with the latest tendencies in your profession. And for InfoJump, something is very important is that personal development is as important as professional orientation. So you can find also some coach that can help you define and reach your goals and increase your self-esteem. You can experiment yoga, meditation, Reiki, to, uh, for internal uh, introspection. And if you want to create your own job, you can meet other entrepreneurs, share experiences, get advised, and get inspired. And this, like, when you enter in a time bank, you enter as an individual. It's a very peer-to-peer -peer platform. You don't enter as a professional. And just that it's a tool that helps you so we can help each other. So let's access, I'm just gonna do a very quick demo. Uh, so, well, here it's my profile. It's like a social network. Uh, what, quick description, uh, what I'm interested in, and above all, what I offer, and what I'm asking for. I want to add skills. There is an assistant, and this is very important because people, they never know what they can offer to the community. And obviously, we all have a lot to offer, so that kind of assistant to help. So, well, for example, we got things for entrepreneurs, coaching, to know the everyday life of any professional. If you're starting your career, you might want to meet a professional before going to a job interview, so just to get a better idea of what is this kind of job. Uh, you can build your digital personal brand, uh, get advice to know where and how to, boost, to look for some, some job, everything about um, bienestar. Uh, well-being, uh, languages, uh, sharing knowledge, to review your resume, which is very important for most of the people, and to uh, get trained for a job interview. So let's take the entrepreneur, because I guess most of you are entrepreneurs. So here you get skills as examples, and well, you choose one, and you can edit and add it straight to your profile. You can also put some projects, and well, a project, just a list of needs you need for an idea to turn itself into a project. And so for this, you might not have enough money, so you can ask help from the others. So let's take Preparate Banco et Tiempo, the project itself, which is its itself in the time bank. And for example, we needed some people to do the video. So we had some young people who've done the video. We're going to pay them with ours. And you can also make a donation if you can't help directly the project. And it's a marketplace as well. So matching functionalities are very important. So you can find who you can help and who you can be helped by. So here, for example, I'm offering help with WordPress. And I know that I can help Belle because she's asking for WordPress. So that's the um, well, I think that's the core functionality of this software, so you can find easily people to get connected online. 
And then, well, then you got your, um, uh, uh, well, then you, you got what is currently um, the different exchanges you're going to do, and you just need to pay. And you got your personal banking account in ours. So just to sum up, Time Bank is a social network. It's a marketplace and online banking system. It's not more complicated than this. And we use one software which is called Communitats. And it's more than a software because it's a wall read of other time banks. And if you exchange with some hours in one time banks, you can get this hour and exchange in another time bank. So they are all connected. So we believe people are the most valuable wealth in this world. We believe that people are the energy that makes the world go round, and that that is exactly the idea of uh, time banks, empower each other. And we all have powers, and as soon as we start sharing these powers with each other, we all are superheroes. And just to, just to finish, I wanted to share with you this mapping from the new sharing economy study. I think it was published last year. And the best new opportunity was time and responsibility. And there are quite many other platforms who are doing kind of the same as we are doing in this time bank, like uh, Flock, uh, you can offer some class of marketing, of uh, anything of uh, French, English. But the big difference is that here you need to pay with your roads. And the same with TaskRabbit. Uh, for responsibility, and the same you need to pay with euros. So basically, it's the same solution for the same problem, but the tool is different. And the question that I think we should uh, wonder about is why using another currency than euro to make transac transactions in a peer-to-peer -peer platform? Uh, well, I don't want to discuss this right now, but then if you have any question, we can answer what can be the benefits of using something else that, than Euro, for example, to avoid speculation on Airbnb or other things. And while well, that might be part of the solution for a more sustainable sharing economy. Thank you, Anne Cécile. Um, yeah, go ahead. There are, uh, before I start, I, I would like to add a few things. There are other software that, that exists. We have mass use later here, first round that works with Community Forge and that will do a session tomorrow with virtual currency. So we'll have a second panel with virtual currency while we try to be more territorial. And uh, Matthew will be presenting Community Forge. There's also an important uh, company that is a foundation that is working in the Netherlands that is called Coin that is developing another software. So there are different software and different approach. Hervé, you have the difficult, very difficult and complex tax task of explaining impossible task. <laughs> the legal issues. Money is complicated. We all think it is impossible. It is not allowed to create money. Hervé, is it legal? Good luck. <laughs> OK. Um, it's really a difficult question because uh, um, Obviously, um, the legal order has not been designed to to host complementary uh, currencies. There is one <laughs> official currency, state currency. So, how can complementary currencies exist? It's it's a real difficult question for. Wait, well, it's a real difficult question for the for the law. Because there is um, there is a monetary public order uh, that the state protects. Under French law, you normally cannot use any other currency than uh, euro for domestic payments. It's very clear. You have article uh, the first article of the French monetary and financial code is very clear about that, and you cannot use any other m currency than the official currency for uh, domestic payments. This principle is highly criticized among uh, legal specialists, but it's the starting point. The second thing is, which is well known, is legal tender. 
legal tender is the principle through which um, any creditor is forced to accept the official currency. It means that you, as a creditor, are forced to accept euros in France. And uh, that's, that's this principle, which is the cornerstone of uh, monetary uh, public order. The other aspect of it is, of course, the monopoly of uh, issuance. Uh, Banque de France and Monet de Paris are, have the monopoly to issue notes and coins in France under the supervision of the uh, European Central Bank. And another aspect of that is the criminal uh, prohibition to issue any monetary signs aimed at replacing coins and notes having legal tender uh, in France. It's a criminal offense, which is heavily sanctioned. Therefore, when you read these articles, it seems that, very simply, complementary currencies in the taking the forms of notes is simply impossible. Because you have this article of the French uh, Penal Code saying, any monetary sign aimed at replacing coins and notes having legal tender is prohibited. If you go further into that uh, public monetary public order, you will also find, of course, the banking monopoly and the monopoly of uh, payment service providers, which means that you can only provide means of payments if you are basically a bank or a payment service provider, which is a new category of uh, uh, financial institution created uh, in, under French law and everywhere in Europe because it derives from a, a directive uh, on services of payments. And the newcomer in this, in this landscape is uh, uh, electronic money institutions. So normally, as a usual business, if you are not one of the three institutions, you cannot, uh, you cannot provide services of payments. This is very clear. So having said that, well, what is the room <laughs> for complementary currencies? OK, so the first thing we can say is, are complementary currencies really currencies? It's not sure because uh, they may not have all the functions of money. You know that uh, in a, a economist usually uh, uh, identify three main functions of money, which is a uh, unit of uh, uh, account, means of payment, and storage of value. So it's rarely the case, rarely the case when you look at those complementary currencies that they have all these functions of money actually. Uh, for instance, they are mainly used as means of payments. If you take the, 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 uh, the example of a Bank of Times, clearly it's a kind of means of payments, but it's not obviously a means of storage value, of storing value, and no, no it is, a, um, it is, it is a, a unit of account, definitely, and it is a means of payment, but it's not a means to store value. You have also the example of demurrage, which is in a synonym and equivalent to uh, font. Uh, li, um, what we called earlier mel melting, melting money. Uh, demurrage in, in English, which means that the, since the money loses its value, uh, it's a percentage of its value every every uh, month, every quarter. Uh, it's not an ideal uh, means of storing value. The second argument we can find uh, in, uh, in favor of complementary currencies, not to be uh, an infringement of this monetary public order, is the fact that they are not aimed at replacing official banknotes and coins, but only at complementing it. All the, the, the argumentary uh, of uh, 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 issuers of uh, uh, complementary currencies say, and it's clear that we are not, we are not trying to to substitute 
uh, your uh, euro and coins and notes, but we will find a place aside this official economy. That it's a really important argument in favor of complementary currencies. And the third one, which derives actually from this uh, second uh, principle, is that complementary currency must be used or are used in a limited network of participants who all willingly participate to this uh, complementary currencies and for a limited range of goods and services. This sentence actually is a more or less the sentence that you will find in the French Monetary Financial Code as an exemption to the monopoly of services of payments, which means that services of payments uh, or uh, means of payments which circulate in a limited network of, uh, of participants and for limited range of goods, they may uh, you don't need for that to be um, to be uh, an, um, uh, an official institution of payment. And the last argument, it's not the last actually, but to make it short, it's I think an important argument which may which may be made in favor of these uh, complementary currencies is that there is probably a misunderstanding about legal tender. Legal tender, it means that as a creditor, you are forced to accept official currency. But does it mean that you may not, if you agree, so accept a different means of payment? Uh, obviously, if you uh, agree, uh, because it's uh, the law of contract between the parties, you should be allowed. You should be allowed to accept a different means of payment, even in domestic, even in domestic payments. Uh, and uh, you have a concept under French law, uh, which is uh, dation en paiement, uh, which means that you, uh, if you uh, agreed with your uh, counterparty to receive one thing, you may uh, accept a different thing to settle your debt, and that's it. So that's that may be a, a, um, a good argument in favor of complementary currencies. But what is important to note here that we, we obvi obviously are in a very gray area in terms of law, and it's very difficult for a, a lawyer to give a clear-cut answer. Yes, it's valid. No, it's invalid. And uh, you need to um, time, yeah. time out. No. Almost. Okay. Almost. Mm. No, about just very briefly, with the, among, because you have, uh, first of all, this first obstacle to, to overcome is the, the uh, banking and monetary uh, law order, which is an obstacle. But when implementing a complementary uh, currency, you will face many other issues because it's a kind of parallel economy. And as, as such, it raises other issues such as tax and accounting neutrality, the problems of undeclared work, which mean that uh, if you exchange uh, services on the, on a platform like uh, Time Bank, do do you need to be affiliated to pay social security charges? Uh, do you need to to register as a self entrepreneur? Uh, do you need to pay VAT? Uh, obviously, all these questions need to be addressed. If you want to to put into implement uh, a local currency at a, uh, at a significant level, also it raises the, the problem of distort in, t in competition because uh, uh, official business may claim that uh, uh, that's uh, very kind, but uh, all these uh, currencies are a kind of unfair competition to them because they they have the social charges, they pay the VAT, and so on. As just as a, as a conclusion, I would say that um, for a lawyer, this uh, question of validity of complementary currency raises many paradoxes because you you, you have heard uh, that uh, the, the premises of these currencies sometimes are that you challenge the system more often that you you think that monetary creation is uh, biased is uh, is uh, wicked, uh, <laughs> and um, in the same time you ask for 
a legal framework to exist. There is a bit of a paradox here, the kind of paradox that can be easily solved actually as, as any paradox. And for the lawyer, it's, it's, very, it's a hard nut to, to crack because you can, you, can, uh, you can find a solution to the paradox in some. So the, the issue maybe is that more, maybe most of these practices are non-legal, just non-legal. Just beyond the grasp of uh, the rule of uh, the rule of law and authorities, but if it's non-legal, it has to be legitimate. And to be legitimate, it's imperative to follow very high ethical standards and rules of conduct, because it's the only uh, that's the only criteria on which the the system, the official system, will let you operate and exist. If you provide no guarantee of money. If you provide no guarantee of payment, if there is a risk of fraud, of operational risk, maybe the banking and the official authorities will, will knock to your door, at your door and say, you can't, you can't do that. So finally, and at my, at my final word, uh, maybe there is a, a scale issue for all these experiments. Uh, so long as you are small, you are not dangerous. And you, you may try, you may experiment. But if you become uh, bigger, then you can be a real threat to the system. And uh, that's where we will certainly see in the future this kind of problem arise. Let's, if you take Bitcoin, Bitcoin is an example of something which thrived in the shadow of uh, uh, legislation for some time and which now is is really a challenge. Thank you, Hervé. <laughs> Thank you for doing this really complicated work that is an expert work because uh, law, le legislation, f fiscal issues and all these different problems are really facing and we need to face them and we need to think how to make it legal, how to make it legitimate. And if I try to sum it up, uh, we need to make it legitimate, that's uh, an important thing. There are new uh, kinds of um, organizations that get agreement from the su European supervisor as a payment system, payment uh, establishment, payment organization, or electronic mu uh, money issuer. And um, just uh, to, to uh, do the link with uh, Solviolet, they worked with the Banque de France, with the local Banque de France, to get some agreement. The city of Nantes in French, that is the sixth biggest city, is also working uh, with the uh, Banque de France, with the ACP, and they are getting an, author an authorization as a bank to create this local currency. So this is a, a subject that has been in the shadow for a long, uh, a long time. Some currencies, one of uh, the, the oldest, or, or what we call the, the grand mouth currencies uh, from Switzerland, it's called the VIA and it exists since 1933 already, so 80 years of experience of uh, uh, data that we can measure and see the impact of such a system. And today you have 60,000 companies in Switzerland that use this complementary currency. Complementary currency is really the, the important uh, word. Enough said uh, on our side. Uh, we want to have your question exchange with you, so do you have any questions? And Let's go. And uh, if you have uh, somebody in, in particular that you want to hear, just precise it. Thank you. I would like to know how um, the platform uh, Banco de Tiempo and uh, Sol Violet are uh, managed. Is, are, are they managed by um, voluntary people? or? Uh, um, well, I answer for Preparate Banco de Tiempo. Um, we launched the project a couple of weeks ago, so it's pretty new. And so far we are in a test phase. We want to check that this solution is really uh, a solution for everyday problem for um, people who are looking for a job or want to create their own job. So we have very minimum budget, and that's info jobs who's paying. Uh, so I'm doing the community management. but. The idea is that as soon as possible, this tool is f for and by people. So I have already some of the users, the time bank, asking me, saying, well, I very like this idea, I like to promote in my town. I'm saying, well, 
make it yours. I give you some presentation and materials to help you, but this time bank, it's something we've been discussing a lot with info jobs. It's not info job time bank. It's for anyone. And just that, well, we are here to to make a first suggestion and then we'll improve the product with the feedbacks of the users. So we're going for more, um, I don't know the term in English, sociocracy or holocracy governance. Share the governance with consentment, where you decide together without objection. And for Le Servulet, um, we are three uh, network uh, development manager working on that, plus one secretary. And uh, the rest of the people are just voluntaries. We have a lot of voluntaries. Uh, but the, the idea for the long, long run is to, as I, as I said, to decentralize the project, to be sure that it's going to be a project just by and for the citizens. And we hope that the association is just going to let the project flow, has the money within the, the economy and because the, the association is actually working on um, formation on social economy and this is one of the projects so we hope that it's going to to belong to people one thing i would like to add about the solviolet that is really special in this project they designed a, a currency that they say is going to be for the common good so if we want to decide and to design together this currency we can't make the exception of one vote. So during one year, you had five different colleges, colleges of businesses, colleges of citizens, colleges of partners, financial institutions, and the authority, the um, uh, city, the government, uh, the local government. And in each group, they decide all together with three different levels of decision. First level, consent, everybody agrees. This is wonderful, doesn't happen all the time but uh, this is the first level if they don't reach like everybody agrees you get to uh, remove objection if you have an objection to that decision probably w you see something that we haven't seen or you're defending your personal interest and we need to include you because it's if it's for the common good we can't make the exception of you and third rule is a two-third majority if you don't reach it at the second level you take the third level and in one year all the five different colleges have been taking their decision at the second level, always, at the, at the later. So this is for me really a, a success as a citizen and um, uh, people, for the people, by the people, education, citizen education. And just two very quick points to add. So far we didn't fix any rules, only one hour equals one hour. For example, we didn't decide if we can go in the red and how much, like if you can be minus uh, 10 hours, if this is possible, because we don't want us to take this decision, but the user to take it. And as it is co-construction, it's been very clear with InfoJob that we'll go for social business, and that if there is any money, like if we need to, or if this project is making money, we'll be reinvested in the project and not going to any shareholders. More questions. Hello. Um, we, we heard a, a lot about the Bitcoin, we, which kind of experienced a, a bubble recently. So I'd like to understand what the difference between a com complementary currency and a virtual currency like Bitcoin. The problem with Bitcoin is that the, um, the how do you say, the, the volume of the money is just fixed. So from uh, a certain level of people, of users, you just have the value of, of the money that is going to increase and increase and it becomes a speculative uh, money. While with the, I, I'm speaking for the Solviolet, um, people actually, every time they, they want to, to use the money, are free to create their, by, on their own, the money. Because they go to the bank, uh, which is Credit Cooperatif, and Credit Municipal, which are the more or less ethical bank, but okay, this is another <laughs> point. Yeah, uh, you go to the bank and you just put one euro, and uh, the bank take the euro, put it on an ethical account, and you give, you have one sol. So you create on your own the money, and the citizens are uh, free to to decide um, the. Um, 
the how do you say the conversion between euro and servlet which is uh, currently one to one but we are able to to say i don't know in the future maybe we can make one to two if the the rate of the euro is going to decrease i don't know that's the, the thing behind the monetary system it's a convention of people deciding together where they want to go what is their common future and they are going to decide how to go there, how, who is co contribu contributing and who's paying if it fails, who's taking the risk. And Bitcoin, the proposition is we are going to build gold, virtual gold. So you, we are going to put our processor together to mine these data, these Bitcoins, and it's going to be limited. So the, the proposition is to create something scarce where the earlier you arrive, the more you're going to get. So that's why you have a lot of people like the Winkle cross brothers, the guys from Facebook at the beginning that have one percent of the mass. So the vision is something that is, uh, in my opinion, not based on equality and uh, universally shared or divided. And that's the, the technique is really impressive because they, they are bringing something new. The fact that is in three years it's reached a, a massive amount of people and uh, advertising uh, and also speculation is showing that is it is now possible for people uh, to create their currency. And the question is what model or what common future do you want to design and how are you going to go towards this thing and organizing with the people deciding who decides, who decides what, how do we decide wh when we create money, how do we contribute, etc. I have uh, two questions for Solvila. The first is how is the tax issue resolved? And secondly, what's the sort of most interesting thing you've seen bought or acquired with uh, with the currency? The, fir the first question you want to know is how do we uh, yeah, when manage it, as, the, the tax? As you grow, surely there's going to be tax issues involved. Uh, yeah, for the companies you mean? Yeah, for yeah. use of the... For the accountability. Well, if people start instance. selling things with the currency. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, because you have businesses actually in the in the network. But you don't have any problem w with this because uh, all your accountability stays in in euro. Because um, right now we have one sol equals to one euro. So you put it on your accountability on the account six. You know, other means of payment, a bit like uh, restaurant uh, uh, tickets. You know. It's it's the same, you know. You all know that uh, restaurant tickets are, is also a complementary currency. Do you know that? <laughs> so this is the same. You put it on your accountability, and you don't have any any problem with this. And the second. And the second. I was just interested to know any examples of interesting things that have been acquired or uh, services that have been exchanged with this money since ah, yeah. you've been following. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One very interesting uh, issue with this money is the way they use microcredits with the account because uh, a lot of people uh, are in exclude of the financial uh, system and they can not just have some uh, some funds to to finance a, a personal project or have a car or something and i i met various people who were very very happy to to be able to to buy their first car just to to go to work or something like this and this is really truly socially useful use of money so there are a few examples like this. A last question, maybe? Um, how do you avoid uh, speculation, in fact? I don't, I don't get it. Sorry? How do you avoid uh, speculation? I don't, I don't get it, because I think you can speculate. Um, it's not that we avoid speculation. It's just that you take money from the financial system, and you affect 100% of this money within the real economy. And you make the money flows within the real economy without, without using for financial purposes. Because uh, we know that the, the money on the bank accounts is just used to finance projects within the real economy. That's the way we are sure to, but it's at the small scale, as Hervé said, it's a very small scale project now. But uh, I think in the future, it's going to be a very serious uh, project and we will have uh, some new uh, question coming to, to our heads, so. Thank you.
Uh, my question is for uh, Banco de Tiempo Preparate. Um, when, I, when, I, when I create an account, um, I'm going to have a level balance of zero, right? Uh, how can I tr um, start um, having exchanges? Can I have a negative account? Yes, it's like this. So Yeah, you can be... Well, so that's the first suggestion we're doing. Well, yes, you can be in the red. You can start asking just that then you supposed before leaving the platform, if you l in case you're leaving the platform to be in zero or you can start asking and then offering the sum of all the, the account are is zero right yes you all start zero That's, this is what we call a mutual credit scheme, and it's uh, quite different from the Solviolet where you need to put your euros when you enter and then you get your Solviolet that flows within a, a network, a local network. Here, everybody can emit and create the credit. So people to people, but you also have this with companies. This is called barter, bartering, and you, you have mutual credit. And we, deep, we do business together and we start at zero and I can sell you something and be at minus 2,000 euros or Nantes for the, so not for the city of Nantes or something, something else uh, depending on the platform you are on. And this kind of um, scheme works when you have people who are at the same time provider and consumer. And if in a collaborative platform you can find this, then you can put any kind of social currency. like. Airbnb, you could rent your apartment and need to rent someone else's apartment. So you could have a social currency. So that would be to foster Airbnb uh, platform and not for some people well, to buy apartments because they have enough money to ask for a loan to the bank and then they can rent these apartments thanks to Airbnb and make a lot of money and well, get something economically very viable for them, but these people are only few that can afford to get a loan to the bank. So, well, that's talking about yeah, monetary uh, just justice mm. as well. Thank you, everybody. I would like to introduce somebody that is as well in the public. It's Sebastiano from Dropis. He will be at the virtual currency panel tomorrow. And he's working on Dropis, that is a currency for the collaborative consumption economy. So if you have questions, Matthew, we are here, and, and uh, Sebastiano as well. Uh, thank you very much. I know this is a complex subject. I know this is not the one uh, that is the most, uh, the funniest, but it is a really important one. And there are solutions, and there are possibilities with legitimacy to create uh, alternatives and complementary currency. We are following with the, net, the workshop uh, that is limited to 30 people because we want to try it to see what skills we can share, exchange, and how we can match offers and, and demands together. So thank you very much, and maybe see you later. Nice.